Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Labour, business and government have signed a master plan to revive the steel industry. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss this development and its importance. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the background to this master plan? Well, the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition has been working on a number of master plans for a number of sectors as part of an effort to reindustrialize South Africa and revive certain sectors or consolidate certain sectors. So we know that automotive has been, had a very successful master plan, for instance, and there've been a number of new master plans that have been developed in a number of other industries from sugar and poultry in the agricultural sector to the uh, steel master plan uh, in the metals and fabrication sector, as well as upstream. And there's a number of other master plans under development the, the high, one of the higher profile ones being the, the Renewable Energy Master Plan, which is still under development. So this is the latest in a series of master plans that are being signed as a sort of social compact uh, between government, business and labor to try and get other sectors revived again, or to get new growth industries such as those in the green economy moving. What are the main components of this plan? In the steel uh, master plan, it's not really about fiscal incentives. So it's not about taxpayer money being directed to steel industry, either in the form of the upstream industry, ArcelorMittal, uh, or downstream of that, the, the metals fabricators and the merchants. It's really about driving, uh, uh, finding a way to drive up demand in the economy. And the two main levers I think that are being looked at is one, the stalled infrastructure program. You know that we've had a, we've got this pent up demand for infrastructure, but there's not a lot of action happening. And we've seen that uh, with, in distress in the construction industry and in the industries that supply into the construction sector, including steel and cement. They've been in distress for a number of years. So to try and revive demand by getting the infrastructure program going again. We know there's a lot of effort coming out of the presidency in particular to try and get big ticket uh, infrastructure projects moving in a context of fiscal constraint that is very much focused at getting in public private partnerships moving or blended finance systems. So there's an infrastructure fund. And uh, so those few components are sort of coming together, hopefully to try and drive these infrastructure projects into a shovel ready mode and to get these projects moving so they can create jobs and also start delivering services that we need both economic infrastructure and social infrastructure. So that, that program will be important for the revival of the metals and engineering and the steel sector. And the other component is uh, very much an import substitution drive. And uh, the import substitution here is that we looked at our economy and we see that we import about 25% of our GDP. So the idea is in various sectors uh, to try and including metals and engineering to try and uh, substitute that with locally uh, made manufactured products and in that way revive our manufacturing activity. This is obviously tricky in an environment where we are a World Trade Organization member and you have to do it in a way that uh, that is within those rules. But uh, around the world uh, countries and companies are looking to shorten their supply chain uh, in a context where the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic has shown where these supply chains are very long or those value chains are very long, you are vulnerable to disruption. So there's a, there is a logic in shortening those supply chains. And there's also this added logic of trying to have a, a domestic a revival in our domestic manufacturing sector where we produce more locally uh, of products that we can do competitively than what we do what we, and what we currently uh, import. What about the contentious issues of pricing and protection? Yeah, these are skirted in the plan. They are mentioned. We know that there's a lot of unhappiness around the way steel is priced in South Africa and whether it's competitive or not. Uh, we, uh, on flat steel, we have a basket pricing methodology which looks at a, a number of countries' domestic prices, adjusts just that for the exchange rate, and then sets the price here. So it's not an, a pure import parity pricing methodology, although it doesn't seem to have made much difference. The pricing is still high. And then on the protection uh, this front, there's still a lot of unhappiness. We know we have 10% base protection, but there's also this uh, additional safeguard protection, which uh, ArcelorMittal applied for 
one hot rolled quill and, another, and a few other grades of steel. And that uh, remains in place. And the steel master plan doesn't make any uh, statement around removing it. But there is a feeling that this protection should only be there if it's, uh, uh, if it's to support an industry that's under threat from, un, uh, from competition that is really illicit competition or illegal competition in terms of World Trade Organization rules. And these safeguard duties were only implemented following a, an ITAC investigation as to whether these were, this was unfair competition. It was found to be unfair, but this is being heavily contested. And we know there's a court case uh, this month where Max Steel has taken this on review. And it's going to be interesting to see what the outcome of that is, because if these safeguards uh, are taken away, immediately that what is now an 18% protection will, uh, should fall to uh, 10%. And there'll, there'll be a request on SARS to repay if it was found to be uh, extended unlawfully, where it was extended in about October last year, then uh, SARS will be asked to repay those tariffs as well. Do you think this is enough to reignite the revival of the sector and especially steel fabricators? Well, I think that there is an imbalance at the moment in the system. Uh, the imbalance is that there is protection for our upstream producer. I think there is a general feeling that it is good to have an upstream producer, but the fact that the protection is very much geared only towards the upstream producer is a problem. Uh, the downstream is less organized, less, uh, uh, usually much smaller firms, and therefore haven't been able to get the same level of protection. And they are very vulnerable to imports uh, from different countries. China is often cited, but that's only one of the countries where these finished steel products come in from. So I think there needs to be a rebalancing of the, if we are gonna use the trade protection measures, rebalancing to support downstream as much as we are supporting upstream and unless that's done I think it's going to be difficult but I think the main driver is really about demand and can South African economy grow again at rates that sort of justify uh, investments in manufacturing downstream manufacturing capacity that make us uh, a much more competitive destination that you know you need economies of scale to be competitive so we've got a very low demand in the economy at the moment. We need to get that demand up. And if you add to that uh, the potential of the African market opening up to us, so having market access through the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, that could also be a, a boon to the industry. So we need those two big engines, the engine of demand, which is really in domestic economy. It's already about getting this infrastructure going at last. It really hasn't been moving, but there are signs uh, the reform that happened in the electricity sector, although it's not public sector money, at least it opens up the way for private investment, say, in new electricity, which is uh, some of those uh, uh, inputs are going to be steel intensive. So that's, that's going to be important. So we are seeing some signs of an infrastructure revival, but it, but it is off a low base. And then if we can have the se secret uh, engine of the market access into the rest of Africa, I think there is hope not only for the upstream industry and growing our steel, primary steel production, but I think more importantly in the job rich area of metals and steel and metals fabrication, by getting those uh, sectors of the economy moving again. They've had a very, very difficult period. They've been job shedding for years and we've seen many business closures. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.